one of the problems that I was explained about <clears throat> this particular restaurant is they open at 5 o'clock and they're open till I believe it's 11 and so they're open during their off, during their hours so Mr. Chavez himself has stopped by on afternoons on several occasions they weren't open and nobody was around so they couldn't do inspections and so it was a matter of getting it I don't know, getting approved, I don't know, to, to get over there. So, um, if you guys want to go on to the next uh, section here, these are all the notices that were sent out to uh, them. Yeah. I think we should continue. Continue the way we have them? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Do you have another question, Bill? <laughs> no. Professor. Professor Frost wants to continue, so I'll consent. <laughs> I, I want to see how much more violence we have. Okay. Um, we're going to be starting with the last one here and going backwards, and basically these are just a record of all the violations that they've been sent. This last one is September 27, 22nd, 2011, and it was the last one that was sent out. <coughs> And it's basically saying everything that, that we've already gone over here. And then I have a summary of all of the other notices that were sent out. <coughs> Excuse me. There's one sent out on July 6, 2011. As you know, Mr. Mendez used to work for environmental health, so he could probably explain this a little bit better than that. Well, Mr. DeCosta, the next, this, the next item is, is in fact, a, an administrative compliance order from the department to, um, in this case, it looks like it's a, to El Vaquero Cafe. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> they have taken the step of issuing an, of an administrative compliance order. Um, so they have taken that administrative action, in other words. And what this does note is all the other notices that they've sent out to them. And so we, it, it states one on July 6, 2011, May 18, 2011, April 29th, 2011, March 21st, 2011, February 17th, 2011, December 20th, 2010, October 18th, 2010, September 29th, 2010, September 17th, 2010, <coughs> June 8th, 2010, May 6th, 2010, April 15th, 2010, March 17, 2010, January 21, 2010, September 29, 2010, and then the original um, <clears throat> notice that they had that they had given. And so there has been a considerable amount of paper sent to Mr. Michelle regarding the, the health issues on this property, the health permit for the restaurant and the drinking water issues. Uh, as far as I know, he's never never contacted the Department of Health. And uh, Mr. Chavez, you said that uh, he's made a, he's uh, he went there and found all the violations during the day, but he can't get it at night. Well, okay, he can't. Well, I, th I think there's a few things going on here. They were there originally in 2008 filed and filed violations, but his major two violations since then, since they haven't been able to get in, were that he never filed for another health permit, which means that he never had any more inspections, and he was not taking care of the water, which was uh, testing for uh, coliforms. 
So those are the issues, I believe, that are, that are mostly in effect here, aside from the violations that he had gotten in 2008. So is that why uh, he's not following up on these violations because of that? He hasn't uh, gotten any from it? Uh, he hasn't liked it? I don't know. You have to ask. Uh, Can we call him? Oh, Mr. Call him? Chavez? Um, well, well, now. I mean, uh, he told me that they, that the, I know that they've been talking about uh, other action through the courts, but I, I mean, the fact of the matter, it does boil down to what Mr. Larson said. I'm just reading into the record what they've sent me. It hasn't been dealt with. Yeah, I see that. So I don't know what else would help, how whatever Mr. Chavez could say would help you. It has not been dealt with as of yesterday afternoon. Why it has not been dealt with, you'd have to ask Mr. Michelle that. <clears throat> so, does anybody have any questions? We're through the health department end of this, at least for now. We have a few other <coughs> from our inspection the other day that we'll go through here, but for this first part of the booklet, uh, in fact, if you had more questions, you may want to just wait until we get to, the, to this part here. So, the next part is um, county business registrations, dispensers, licenses in particular for the business, for the bar and the restaurant. Um, as I explained before, a dispenser's license is an authority that is given to the county to collect the $250 uh, permit fee. Either the state can collect it or the county can. The county is collecting it. We only have a couple of uh, them that we actually issue in this county because the other uh, alcohol certain places are in municipalities. Uh, Mr. Michelle is being one of them. Uh, when I first came here in 2010, he was uh, behind, I believe, a year or two and then he came in and paid them. I, we had sent out a notice way back then, but he did come in and pay them. This was a letter sent by the county clerk's office, June 30th, which is basically the day that the um, permit runs out, and it was basically informing him that he needed to come in and pay for his dispenser's permit, which was $250, and this is by state statute. And uh, so that was June 30th, 2011. June 27th, 2012, he was sent out another letter. And this was for the new year coming up. So at the end of 2012, he was basically two and a half years behind on his dispenser's license or permit. So are those current now? They are current. They are current. I think he paid them uh, about a month ago. Um, we've got a application for a business registration here, a copy of it, where he took over, 2010. We've got another one here, 2010, where he took over, where he had it put in topless country. Uh, they're just the applications just for your, if you wanted to see anything on it. Um, until a month ago, the last valid business registration ran out, let's see, I'm sorry, it ran out on July 1st, 2011, and here's a copy of it. In Mr. Uh, Michelle's application, he has new valid ones, copies and that in the front of his book if you wanted to see them, but I did check on it and he has paid them and there's receipts of it. <coughs> So that's for HC Properties, which is a holding company that Mr. Michelle has. It actually owns the land and the business, as I, as I recall. And so um, the second one is for, let's see, Topless Country. The first one was for El Vaquero. And then the next page was a copy of when he paid it in 2010 where it was uh, where it was in uh, arrears then also when paid it. 
next page was a letter that I had uh, the clerk's office write for me uh, so that we could send it to um, his attorney. And I don't know, did this ever get sent to? I think it did. Oh, okay. Anyways, I was getting information, and this was um, back in January, I believe, and it just goes through what was owed and, uh, you know, how long, you know, what what the fines were and everything. Uh, Mr. Michelle came in on 2 13 and paid all his obligations as far as that goes. <clears throat> the next several pages, gentlemen, are the old um, meetings, commission meetings, when this was um, uh, approved. And do we need to go through those? I put them there for your information, but I didn't see anything in there that really applied to what what was going on today. I just put them there for your information. So if it's okay, I'll go on. It's okay with me. It's going on. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So we're on this page right here. Everybody there? Um, I've been in contact with the uh, Alcohol and Gaming Department of the state, and these are facility uh, citations, and uh, there are several of them. Now, this also covers, um, it goes back to the whole facility, even when Mr. Michelle didn't own it. So there's a few on here pre uh, Mr. Michelle. But we're going to go through the uh, separate violations here. Yeah. And these have been resolved and paid. But when we look at the ordinance, you'll understand why I included these, even though they have been paid. So um, this is informational. It's so that you understand what's been going on and the problems that have been over there. The next page was written, it was two citations written to agency properties itself, which is the Mr. Michelle's company. And I believe it's a, yeah, I believe it's an LLC. Um, <clears throat> open container restriction. Open Coors Light on golf cart placed in front of door. So that was basically for having an open container outside of the, outside of the, um, the business. And then the next one down below there, which is 20904, sales to intoxicated persons, subject to passenger DWI driver's vehicle, driver arrested, subject blue, RBT4 and showed obvious signs of intoxication. So this was for over-serving alcohol. The next page, which is citation 20902, is for uh, NMSA 24 dash, I'm sorry, 24.16.14, smoking on licensed premise, three pa patrons smoking inside of a stash establishment during a walkthrough. This is the uh, D. Johnson no smoking uh, law, you know, in, in bars, restaurants, public buildings. How is that enforced? Um, well, <clears throat> Alcohol and Gaming has agents that go and do walkthroughs. We also have a deputy that's certified to do it in our county. Um, but I'm not sure I know they were talking about it, but I don't think they're doing it now. I don't think we have ever issued a citation through our county, but we do have a certified deputy uh, that can do this in our county. So uh, Alcohol and Gaming has their own law enforcement officers, and that was who did this. Um, so these were written to agency properties, the businesses themselves. The next one is 20903, and um, I, I went through and blocked out 
uh, names that didn't apply, people that don't work for the business, but we left the ones that work for the business because it's pertinent. And of course, all their uh, personal information is blocked. <coughs> this one was written to Adam Harrison, and I believe that he is a bouncer there. I think I've seen his name somewhere else for that, but I could be wrong about that. Failure to have server permit on person. So in other words, all the bartenders or whoever works there has to have their server license on them. And when they went through, they didn't have it on them. Uh, the next one, next page is 20905. This one was written to July Jones. And this one was serving to an intoxicated person, passenger and vehicle of DWI and parking lot. Club 203, driver arrested, DWI, passenger blue, 0.18, RBT, showed obvious signs of intoxication. And then no server permit on possession while serving. So what it looks like to me is that one was written to the, to the business and then one to the server, uh, both of them that got violations. The next pages are basically, uh, this one's Department of Public Safety with the State Police, um, and it shows um, Mr. Michelle being interviewed, July Jones being cited, Adam Harrison being cited, um, uh, Leon, I'm sorry, uh, the rest of these names here were folks that weren't um, weren't workers there, but they were arrested or they were cited for various different issues. <clears throat> and then, of course, this is an incident report uh, talking about sales to an intoxicated person and then the servers. And these are basically um, the two different departments that did the investigation on this. There's a report here. It says a state of New Mexico incident report. And um, <clears throat> let me read this to you. On Friday, October 21st, 2011, I agent Timothy Carlson, Department of Public Safety, Special Investigation Division, was working alcohol enforcement at Topless Country. 203 located six miles east of I-40 exit 203, Torrance County in the state of New Mexico. I was on duty wearing plain clothes during this operation. My badge, weapon, commission card concealed in my person. Approximately 2,100 hours while conducting a compliance operation at Topless Country. While a walk through at the establishment, I was met by a doorman, Adam Harrison. I identified myself as Agent Carlson with the New Mexico Special Investigation Division displaying my badge of office. I asked Mr. Harrison for his server permit. Mr. Harrison explained to me he did not have one, but it was in his car in the parking lot. I informed Mr. Harrison that while checking IDs at the door, he's required by law to have it on his person, not in his car. I then issued him an administrative citation, non-traffic citation for the violation to produce proof of service permit, an administrative citation, failure to have service permit in possession while working to be followed the alcohol gaming division. I was then informed by Agent Hoy that there were open containers in a golf cart parked at the entrance of the front door to the establishment. I went to the golf cart and the floorboard of the car was of course light bottle, partially full of beer. I also observed three male subjects smoking inside the establishment while speaking with Adam. The male subjects were identified, and you've got this all blacked out. All three male subjects were issued non-traffic citations for smoking in a public establishment by New Mexico State Police. I then made contact with manager Ryan Michelle. I explained to Mr. Michelle that his doorman was issued an administrative citation and non-traffic citation for failure to produce proof while checking IDs at the door. I then asked Mr. Michelle about the open container of Coors Light and the golf cart parked at the front door and it is not part of the floor plan approved by AGD. Mr. Michelle that he did explained he did not know anyone was drinking outside. I asked Mr. Michelle why the patrons were being allowed to smoke inside the establishment. 
He explained that in the process of trying to get a cigar bar license and told them that they could smoke at their own risk while inside the establishment. I then issued Mr. Michelle two administrative citations for the following NMAC 15.10.51.9, open, con open container restrictions and smoking in a licensed premise. Administrative citations will be filled with alcohol. In gaming, while leaving the parking lot of Topless Country, New Mexico State Police had stopped a white truck for possible driving under the influence. State Police had arrested the driver of the truck identified as blacked out. One of the passengers identified as blacked out was being interviewed by Agent Hoy. Agent Hoy had blacked out, performed a voluntary breath test using the RBT4, which resulted in a BAC 0.15 in the brief time I was observing Mr. Blacked Out showed signs of obvious intoxication. Um, I read this through this so that we would see the part about the smoking and also Mr. Michelle being aware of what was going on there. Um, and the next page um, says, I explained to Mr. Michelle that a passenger inside of a truck that had been stopped for a DWI outside leaving parking lot had just been given a BAC of 0.15 said he was served in the establishment prior to all the cops coming in. I asked Mr. Michelle who was the server that was serving the two males in blue shirts. Mr. Michelle thought that it was the server identified as July Jones. I then issued Mr. Michelle an administrative citation for sales to intoxicated persons. Administrative citation will be filed with Alcohol Gaming Division. Uh, interview with July Jones. I explained to Mrs. Jones what had happened if she remembered the two males in blue shirts. Mrs. Jones explained that she knew the two males, Mr. Blacked Out and Mr. Blacked Out, had served them a Corona beer each. She then removed the drinks from them once all the cops had entered the establishment because she felt they were over intoxicated. I asked Mrs. Jones for her service permit and she explained that she did not have it with her and she'd left it at home. I then issued Mrs. Jones two administrative citations of the following 15.10.51.11, sales to intoxicated persons, and New Mexico AC 15.11.31.11, failure to have service permit and possession when serving. Administrative citations will be filed with Alcohol Gaming Division. She has also issued a non-traffic citation for sales to intoxicated persons. <clears throat> then it just goes on to explain that this is all in uh, uh, evidence and that it, it's on recordings. <clears throat> the next um, report <clears throat> uh, basically was from uh, Agent Hoy, the other officer that was involved on this. Um, and it basically goes over um, all what we just talked about, just from his point of view. Do you guys want me to read it through? I don't see anyone that does. Okay. No. There is um, one part of one of these reports that I did want to read to you because it does directly affect the decision that you guys will be making. So just bear with me for a minute. I will get to it. Okay. Um, if you go through these next half dozen pages, it's basically copies of the um, non-uniform traffic, I mean the uniform traffic tickets and what Agent Boyd and the other officer vote. Um, there's a part in here about where one of the agents had a, um, uh, found a woman in decent dancing. I don't think we need to go into this. It's a little bit more graphic. Um, you guys can read it yourselves sitting there. And this is the last report. And it's about two or three pages in from the very back. Uh, the only part that I would like to read to you was this was uh, Agent Hoy who noted in here, later that night I received a call. Is everybody there? I'm sorry. 
got the citation for it. It's about three pages from the back, I'm sorry, four pages from the back, counting back from the yellow back part. Okay. And it's at the, about halfway down, it says end of interview. Later that night, I received a call from Mr. Michaud, who left me a voicemail. He was apologizing again, explaining he understood I had given him numerous chances to fix the smoking problem and asking for another break.